Are you struggling to decide whether you should be investing in a unit trust or a living annuity? Uh, maybe you're at the doorstep of retirement or maybe retirement's up on the horizon and you have access to some liquid cash, but you want to make sure that you're putting this in the right vehicle. How do you ensure that you're doing that? In this YouTube video, I'm guiding you on the differences between a unit trust investment and a living annuity. And I'm calling this the final showdown, right? Because I want to give you everything that you need to do and know in order to make sure that you're making the most appropriate decision. Now, I'm Devon Aika, and let's get started straight away in today's video. What I want to start sharing with you is that before you even think about a living annuity or a unit trust, I want you to first start to analyze what it is that you want from these vehicles, right? Uh, very often, this is a missing step when it comes to the financial planning, but it is the most essential step. And you want to start to become very clear on your goals, right? So your goals. And there could be a number of things that you are saving toward, right? Uh, maybe you are saving towards getting an income. Perhaps it could be that you want to grow well. Perhaps you're looking at ways in which you can save on tax, right? You want to pay less tax. Maybe you're looking at ways in which you want to create a legacy. So it's important for you to become extremely clear on what you want from the investment, even before you put your money in. And here's the reason why. If you are not sure on what you want from the investment, then you're pretty much going to take whatever the financial advisor or the insurance company is providing you. And then you might find yourself in a position where you have a product, but at a later stage, you find that the product's not meeting what you want, right? Meaning you might want your, to receive an income, but the income's not enough. You might want your capital to grow, but your capital is actually decreasing. You might want to pay less tax, but you're paying more tax. So the way to get this done properly in the beginning is you want to analyze and be extremely clear on what you want from the investment. And then before you sign, before you commit yourself into any type of investment, analyze carefully. Is what you are being offered, is the unit trust or the, unit, the living annuity, is that able to tick the boxes on your goals, right? The things that are most essential to you. Please don't miss out on this first step because this is the reason that many people end up losing a huge chunk of money, right? So if you want to get this right, this is your foundational phase. The absolute first thing that you want to do is become extremely clear. Now, once you know that, then you can start to analyze which vehicle works best for you. But I first want to give you a breakdown on the differences between the two, right? I want to give you a basic understanding as to what is a unit trust investment and what is a living annuity investment. So we'll start off first on the unit trust. Now, unit trust investment is basically, uh, you might have heard of the stock market, but it's an investment that's buying shares in the stock market, right? You're buying units or shares of companies that are listed on the stock market. So you might be investing a certain amount of money. The fund manager is taking that money and they're investing it into shares with various companies. Now, within unit trust, there are various types, right, of unit trusts that are available. And naturally, you want to make sure, again, that you are clear in the beginning on what it is that you want. So you put yourself in the correct type, right? Because there's hundreds of different unit trusts to choose from. It can be extremely overwhelming if you are not clear, again, on what's happening in the beginning. What I also want you to know is that a unit trust investment, a very important note, is made with voluntary money. What do I mean by voluntary money? it's not compulsory for you to have a unit trust investment, right? It's not compulsory. You're not forced to invest here. You can, if you have money in your account, if you have money in a bank account, you can, you can opt to invest here, right? This is what I mean by voluntary investment. Now, what is a living annuity? On the living annuity side, easy way to understand this, and I'll start off with the word annuity. Annuity is just a fancy word, meaning income. It's just a fancy word for income. So living annuity, think of it as an investment that's paying you an income whilst you are alive. That's it. It's an investment that pays you an income whilst you are alive. Right? Now with this money, with this particular investment, it is made with compulsory money. What do I mean by compulsory money? If you look at the source in order to get a living annuity, you must either have a retirement annuity. You must have a pension fund. This could also be the, the, the GEPF, right? Because that's a pension fund or 
the comp your company pension fund, or you must have a provident fund. You could even also have preservation funds, right? But you got to have some type of retirement vehicle. Now, with these vehicles, uh, there's been a change, remember, in the laws when it comes to provident funds. But remember, there's a one-third amount that you can receive in cash and the two-thirds that you have to invest. Now, that two-third portion that you are investing, I am referring to that as compulsory, okay? It's compulsory money, meaning you have to invest that. So the one third that you are taking out in cash, you can take out in cash, that's voluntary. The two third is what you must invest. Let's use a very basic example so that you understand this process easily, right? Let's just assume that you have an investment. It's a retirement annuity. It's a pension fund uh, or it's a provident fund. And you have 3 million rand. What it means is you can access one third of this in cash and that one third is a million rand the balance which is the two third that's two million rand pardon me that's two million rand this amount must be invested for an income if you have those vehicles so notice this money here is voluntary you can put it to unit trust this money here is compulsory this is where the living annuity comes up right now, in terms of this, there are five different options that are available for you to earn an income. The living annuity is one of the five options. So you want to make sure that you're choosing it correctly. I won't go into that detail for this video because we are comparing unit trust against a living annuity. And we've still got a few more elements that we want to be mindful of. So notice, first difference is a unit trust investment. It requires voluntary money, right? Money that you have and you are voluntarily investing. A living annuity. It's money that is from a compulsory, uh, that's compulsory for you to invest, either from an RA pension fund or provident fund. It's the two third component of that that you now get to invest, right? Remember, a living annuity is one of five different options that are available for you when you're doing that investment. The next thing that I want to do or analyze for you, and we'll put them up here. So, unit you know, trust, yeah. And then on this end, I'll type in the living annuity. The next thing I want to start to compare is I want to analyze the term, okay, term. What do I mean by term? It means how long, if you are putting money into the unit trust, how long do you need to be there? If you are putting money into a living annuity, how long do you have to be there? Now, if you are inside of a unit trust investment, if you're putting money in a unit trust investment, there's no term to it. There's no term. Meaning, I'm saying this loosely, you can invest money today and you can take that money out tomorrow, right? It's as quick as that. The reason that it's not advisable is obviously investments need time in order to perform well. But the structure or the nature of a unit trust investment is there's no time period to it, right? You really can put money in today and you can access it the very next day. Right? When it comes to a living annuity, however, there is a term to that investment. And the term here is usually, I'm saying usually, the term is usually for life, right? Bearing in mind, remember, you are taking two thirds of your retirement annuity pension fund or provident fund, and you, you, you're investing that. Now, the reason that it is in, an investment for life is this is basically government's way of saying, look, for as long as you've had the RA, you've had the pension fund and the provident fund, you've been getting some tax benefits, right? And now when you get to retirement, we're giving you a portion of this out in cash that you can do anything you want, but we're making it compulsory for you to invest a two-third portion because we want to ensure that you are able to earn an income. If you are earning an income, there's less people dependent on the old age social ground, right? So this is sort of like the thinking behind the scenes here, which means this investment must be for life. If government just allows everyone to access to all of it, because of lack of discipline, more people might be in a worse off position financially, right? So it's usually for life. There is an opportunity. Remember I said there are five different ways to earn an income of your two third. So the living annuity allows you the option at a later stage. If you don't like the living annuity, you can then go back to adjust it into any one of the other options, right? It's, it's allowing that. But 
even the other options, your term is for life, right? The money gets locked in. It's designed to pay you an income for as long as you live. So we looked at the first thing, which is in terms of the term, right? Now, again, you want to be clear on what you want at the start so that you then start to analyze which vehicle is going to be right for you, right? Meaning if you want something where there's no term, you want to access the money readily, then you know living in UT in this example is going to work. If you know that you want something disciplined and you want to earn the income, then you know a living in UT might be the one that you want to aim for, right? Not the unit trust. So next one we're going to work with is in terms of access to funds. Now, access to funds, meaning if you're putting money into the unit trust, how easy it is to access this money. And here, it is unlimited. Meaning you could put money in the unit trust, you can take as little out as you want, you can take as much as, out as you want, you can take this as often as you want, right? There's no term to the investment and there's no restriction on how much of money you can access. Obviously, you can't access more than what is available in your fund, right? Again, remember, it's not practical to put money in and treat this as a bank account because usually these investments need time to perform well. When it comes to a living annuity, your access to funds, remember, it is paying a monthly income. Uh, shouldn't really say monthly, but you can choose the time period, right? So I'll take the word monthly out because the income doesn't have to be paid monthly. It could be paid annually. It could be paid every six months, quarterly. You get to choose that but the living annuity pays you an income. So that is something that is happening all the time. You are able to adjust the income on a yearly basis, but know that it pays you an income. Even though it's paying you an income, there's no other access. So it means that the money's sort of locked in. You're able to earn an income, but that's it. You can't, if, if you needed an extra 100,000, you can't go to this living in UT and say, hey, I need access to an extra 100,000. You can't do that. One time in a year, you'll have the opportunity to change your income. Once you make that decision, it's sort of locked in over a 12-month period, right? And then it continues like that. Next, what I want to chat to you about is the tax. But I want to break tax up into two parts here, right? I want to first start to have a look at, actually, we'll be talking on tax on three parts. I first want to start to have a look at the tax on the growth, right? Meaning your unit trust investment is going to grow. What's the tax on the growth? The living annuity is going to grow. What's the tax on that growth? Right? Let's start off on the unit trust. When it comes to the tax on the growth, what you have to be mindful of is that growth is taxable. Okay. Meaning let's say you are earning some interest. You will have what we call interest exemption. So SARS allows us to have a certain amount that's interest-free. Now, at the time of me shooting this video, if you are below 60, that's the amount that is available. If you are below 65, if you are above 65, 34,500 is what's available. Let me explain this. What it means is if you are earning interest, when it's less than 23,800, it's exempt. There's no, you, you're, not, you're not gonna have a tax implication, right? But when it's more than that, when it's more than that, that extra amount is now going to be added to your salary, which means it could push you up a tax bracket. So you want to be, again, very clear that you're making the right call here. Age plays a role. As I said, the interest exemption varies, but with the introduction of the tax-free savings, I've noticed that the government hasn't been changing this. Please remember, when you are doing this on tax calculation, you have to make sure that you consult in the latest tax guide. The next difference I want to go through on, on a tax on growth now, this is very interesting, so pay careful attention. The tax on growth on a living annuity, here it is, 0%. Right? There's no tax on the growth, meaning this your living annuity can grow and grow and grow. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, in addition to that, as from the no tax, this also applied from a capital gains tax perspective. right? So on the unit trust investment, Capital gains tax is real. Every time you sell a share, you may be liable for capital gains tax. But on the living annuity side, it's free from capital gains tax, right? So it's, it's still at zero, okay? Now, brings me to the next point. We're gonna start to look at tax on income. I'm gonna do a shortcut here and I'm gonna say UT on this end and I'm gonna say LA for living annuity on this end, right? So what's the tax on income? So remember what I said earlier, 
is the living annuity is designed to provide you with an income, right? That's its purpose. But a unit trust investment, because it's flexible, it also allows you the ability to, to get a monthly income from it. So you can get an income from both. Now I want to have a look at what's going to happen to the tax on that growth, okay? So on a unit trust investment, very interesting, very interesting, it's 0% tax on the income. What's the reason for that? If you notice what I shared with you earlier, the tax is either going to operate in one of two ways. You're either going to be taxed on the growth or you're going to be taxed on the income. On the living annuity, on the unit trust side, pardon me, you are taxed on the growth. So whatever the gain is, you are taxed. And therefore, the tax on your income is going to be zero. On the, in the case, in the instance of the living annuity, what's happening is your tax on the growth is zero, but now the ta- your, your income itself is taxed. How is it taxed? The same sliding scale that you have currently in terms of your work, the pay, pay as you earn tax, it's operating in the same way because now you're earning an income from this and that income is going to be a taxable income. So notice the difference of the two, right? So you have a clear perspective again on which route you're aiming toward. The next thing I want to chat to you about is uh, it's around the tax that happens on death, right? But I want to I want to rather term this thing legacy planning, okay? Legacy planning, meaning maybe you've got a spouse or you've got kids or grandkids and you want to make sure that you have that the vehicle that you have allows this thing to be passed along the lines to your family, right? Now, when it comes to a unit trust investment, if you are going direct, okay, if you are going direct into a unit trust investment, then you have no beneficiaries. When you have no beneficiaries, it means that this becomes part of your estate. If it's part of your estate, it means it would attract executive fees. The executor is the uh, person or the company that's responsible for winding your estate, right? Carrying out the wishes according to your will. So you have the executor fees that come into play. You also have what is called a state duty, right? It's a, it's a tax that the wealthy pay. So this comes into play, right? The estate duty. Uh, and this is, again, is on death. Now, what happens in terms of a living annuity? In terms of a living annuity, again, it depends on your beneficiaries, right? how they opt to use this. So the first point is they are beneficiaries. You can appoint a beneficiary or you can appoint beneficiaries, right? Now, here's the thing. Your beneficiaries can elect to have this amount paid out in cash. If they have this amount paid out in cash, I'll say it here, cash, then it's going to be taxed, okay? And if they choose to have the amount, the other option is they can continue with the investment Obviously, the num- the policy numbers and all that will change, and they can start receiving an income. Okay, so the beneficiaries have two options there. With unit trust, it has to be an outright outright sale. With a living annuity, the beneficiaries have a choice in terms of how they're going to structure it. Right now, it's critically important that you are clear again on exactly what you want the investment to do for you. If you analyze all the points that I've shared with you, you sort of should have an idea now as to again which one works best for you. If you know what your goals are, right? So again, I'll reiterate, if your goal is to create legacy planning, you wanna compare the difference between the two. You can see in this instance, the living annuity does this a bit better because of it having a beneficiary. It's a nice advantage. Also, the beneficiaries have a choice in terms of whether to collect this in cash or on income. On the unit trust side, because this forms part of your estate, right? Now, the beneficiaries have to wait for that winding of the estate process to be done. Okay, so this could take time. It could take time, right, before this money actually pays up. Whereas on the living annuity side, because there's a beneficiary there, this can happen sooner. And when I say sooner, let's just say two to three months. Uh, Again, it depends on how soon documents can be supplied, right? Let's bear in mind, touch wood at that time that you're not around, it's hard for your family. It may take them a t- some time before they reaching out to the advisor in order to make these changes uh, and then request the payment of the, fu- the funds. But I want you to know that it, it's, really, it's, it's significantly shorter than the winding of a state process, especially if the structure of the living annuity in the beginning is done really well. Now, one last thing before you head off. I haven't spoken to you about the investment, right? 
meaning how does investment work? So I just want to quickly touch base on that so that you get to know the differences of the two. This could be a unit trust investment, yeah? Remember your unit trust, the money has to be invested somewhere. The place that that money is invested will bring some type of return. Okay, that's the fund that that money is invested in. On the unit trust, what you wanna be mindful of is you have the ability to take an income or no income. See, that choice is yours, right? You also wanna be mindful that the insurance company, wherever you are investing, they would have their costs, okay? Naturally, if you are doing away with this income, if you're not taking an income, you give your capital more chance to grow because it's not paying out any of the growth, right? Especially again, if you invest in the right place. Let's compare this to a living annuity. Now on the living annuity side, the structure is, is very, very similar, okay? I'm gonna write LA as a shortened form for living annuity. The money again is invested, you are able to get some type of return. But this time, however, the income is compulsory. So you will be getting an income from this. You must take an income, but you can adjust the scale of it. It run, ranges from 2.5% to 17.5%. And you can change that income annually. So meaning you can adjust that income on an annual basis. You still have the cost here from the insurance company that you wanna be mindful of. Again, looking at what I shared with you on the legacy side, I said that should anything happen to you, touch wood on a unit trust side, direct unit trust don't have beneficiaries, so the funds go into the estate, can take some time, and remember you're gonna have an executive fee on that. When it comes to the living annuity, that has beneficiary or beneficiaries based on what you've appointed, which means the money can then flow across a bit more easier into them, and they have the choice whether to take it in cash or, or whether they're gonna earn an income. So that's it. From a return perspective, if you are investing, I'm using an example, if you are investing your money in fund A in a unit trust, and you are investing your money in the same fund here, fund A in a living annuity, I want you to see that you're getting the same return, right? Because it's got nothing to do with the vehicle itself. See, the vehicles themselves don't uh, have to do with the markets and the returns. What has to do with the markets is where you are investing it, right? So if you're choosing fund A for the unit trust and fund A is gonna deliver, in my example, 5%, it means that if you use the living annuity with fund A, same time period, you're also getting 5%, right? They will work hand in hand. So the reason I did this graph for you is I want you to analyze this carefully. A return or where the money is invested it's just one aspect of this decision that you have, right? In terms of investing money, it's just one aspect. In addition to that, you're gonna to have to decide on the income, getting that to the optimal space. You have to decide on the insurance company's costs and how much of money is actually gonna get into the respective vehicles. So I hope you found the, via, the, the video insightful. This give, should give you now a comprehensive insight into the difference between a unit trust investment and a living annuity. You should now be in a position where you are able to compare the options and sort of have a, a, an idea, maybe a bit more certainty as to which route is most appealing for you. Now, please, I wanna make sure that you, you, you know that this video is general because I don't know you personally. And the information that I'm sharing with you doesn't apply to your specific set of circumstances, which means your next step is you wanna engage with a financial planner or advisor to see this is what you are, are doing. How can they complement it and also go into some of the fine print that I haven't gone into for this video, right? You wanna do all that work in advance before you sign anything, before you commit yourself to something, again, because this is how you ensure that you are growing well. If you're needing more assistance from me or wanna book a personal consult, you're welcome to send across an email, you'll find it in the description. If you found the video helpful, give me a thumbs up sign so I know that the content is, good, is great for you. And I also wanna invite you, right? Comment below, raise any of your questions. If there's something that I have not covered, I'm happy to look into this and help make your financial journey a lot more easier. If you have not already done so, then I encourage you to click the subscribe button and also share this with family and friends, individuals that you know who would, be, uh, who would find this video to be helpful. I'll see you on the next one.